Give an example of how we've delivered cost savings through smarter design for our clients. Luckily, a lot of this is found at purepower.com through our blog articles. So for those who are more interested in these cost savings as well as value engineering methods, definitely go to our website. I think one thing that we have developed internally as a company is where we want to put our equipment, what we want to capitalize for the really long runs versus the short runs. For example, inverter placement. We have a lot of DC feeders on a ground mount that are running two inverters, right? We can put the inverters at the array where the transformers all the way to probably near the site entrance, but that's a very long AC run. What we can do is really capitalize on the DC portion of it and maximize that length because that's running at a higher voltage. At a higher voltage, you're reducing the overall voltage drop for the same length of run versus that of a 600 volt AC system. So we put all the DC combiners there, aggregate all the DC strings, and then centralize the inverters really close to the transformers so that we're able to capitalize not only on the high voltage of PV output, but also on the fact that there are clipping losses associated with DC. So we're able to leverage that and maximize the voltage drop. So you avoid the clipping losses. Clipping loss is always gonna be there. Unless you have a DC to AC ratio of one to one, you're always gonna have it. It's just a matter of what are you gonna do with it, right? Mm -hmm. Clipping loss is, you know, let's say I have five megawatts of DC coupled to four megawatts of AC. So at a given time frame, because it's not always the case, it's dependent on where the sun is throughout the day, the optimal temperature, all of the environmental conditions that really provide you uh, the most power output at a given time, I might have this thing called a clipping loss where I'm producing five megawatts of DC, but I only have four megawatts of AC available to digest it and send it into the grid, right? Then I'm losing one megawatt of power. Mm -hmm. Obviously I'm generalizing this, right? This isn't, you know, exact one-to-one, -one, but generally speaking, that's what happens. Since we're not utilizing that one megawatt of power at that given time anyway, why not use that as a voltage drop loss and really capitalize on the fact that the loss is gonna be there, let's utilize it on something that we're gonna lose anyway. So moving on, let's talk about AHJs and utilities. What's a recent AHJ or utility hurdle that you've had on your team that you've overcome and how did you overcome it? I don't know about recently, but when the NEC 2020 codes came in, at the time, you know, I think a lot of developers are aware of what happened during the time, but there was a big push for a lot of developers, a lot of EPCs to go to Maine. So one of the things that the Maine State Inspector required was part of the NEC codes, uh, specifically 690.15, where he required all the inverter AC and disconnect switches either within the inverter, embedded into the inverter, or 10 feet away. But if you take a look at the codes further down to 690.15c, there is a small verbiage where it says in the event that the disconnecting means is not within 10 feet or within the inverter itself or the equipment, then it can be remote and away from it as long as that disconnecting means is capable of lockout tag out. So I was able to pinpoint that to the state inspector. Can I have this inverter without a disconnect right next to it? He approved it. We were able to kind of change his way of thinking and yeah, get this system up and running. I think it's really awesome because kudos to that AHJ. Not a lot of AHJs are willing to hear the engineer of records and their rebuttal and their code interpretations. In the code, ultimately, whatever the HJ says goes, right? Fortunately, you know, we lucked out in the fact that our state main inspector, shout out Kern Butler, he was able to at least listen to what we had to say and, and reverse uh, his interpretation of the code. 